Okay, so how many of us are sufficiently scared? <laughs> how did you find John? How John is local in the community, and I saw him one night or one uh, at a uh, fundraiser for a child care um, 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 fundraiser, and they invited local vendors to come and like talk in the mic. Yeah. What's that? Oh, hello. Wait, is this, is this, what, what, what? It's, it's on, just talk like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> anyway, so, I met John at this fundraiser and a uh, child care center, and then I saw him again um, at the farmer's market, the first one you saw there uh, with the two parents with the kids with um, autism. And I don't know, I just listened to him, and the lines were long. The people were asking intelligent, good, great questions. He could answer them. You can see how kind of eloquent he is. Uh, but they had the animals, the little kids, the parents, the whatever. So I don't know. I just thought, <laughs> you know, we all have human interest stories. And um, I thought that I didn't go there to ask him to make a film. But I said, has anyone ever done anything? And he said, well, a couple guys came up a couple years ago, and it wasn't successful. And I didn't blah, blah, blah. And so then um, Nancy Vick, who is um, my co-producer in this, I took over, her over there one day, and she started to talk to John because I think it was a matter of trust with him, and she kind of convinced him that we could be trusted, I could be trusted, and we could be... So that's how we started. Actually, the first shoot was the Lehman College one, the GMO labeling in New York State. Hmm. So, And the whole had, like, time frame was this year? Or how oh, many no, years? this was a four-and-a-half-year project. The film was a four and a half year project. And uh, he gave us like three days warning on the layman thing. He said, hey, if you guys may want to do that. So we did go down and do that. That was the first shoot. Then we did two that same autumn and uh, just started from there. Mm. That's how I found him. I just thought he was, you know, I don't know why, <laughs> but um, I even thought about doing that because I didn't until that kind of uh, saw him there. So, and that's the way projects happen. Anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what yeah. are, uh, real quick, some of the other projects you've done prior to this? Well, I spent a lot of my time uh, producing in the theater. And congratulations to you for starting a little theater group. Oh, up thank, there. thank you. I was on Broadway for a few years and did a few, few, few shows. And then I ran an art center in our local community. And I did, uh, I'm not a, I don't consider myself a filmmaker. You travel around to these festivals and I want to thank everyone um, who puts this festival on, but you, these, there are a lot of filmmakers in the country. I, I've done like four films or something like that. And if I find something I like, then I'll do it. I did a, a, one of the ones just before this was a, um, there's a school for extremely dis disabled kids in Chicago and I did that. I did the first in, uh, film on uh, Ronald McDonald House and found an 86-year-old artist out in Scottsdale, and I liked him, so we <laughs> filmed him <laughs> over the course of time. Wow, uh, pretty impressive for someone yeah. who's not a filmmaker, right? Yeah, well, Beautifully you, done. You hire people, you, if you've got really supportive, great talent, then um, a project can happen without <laughs> you. <laughs> so is John going to ever run for office or anything? Oh, or no, no? Uh, no, no I, I think... Um, you know, he almost could probably, but he's, he's pretty, um, he's an activist and an advocate, and I don't know where that belongs in politics at this point, but I think it's, you know, he, he accomplishes a lot just by doing what he's doing. And do, how does he feel about this? Oh, he loves the film. It's made him a star, um, at least in our community and around the country, because we've had, we've gone to like 20 festivals around the country, and he's not gone to all of them by any means, but... Um, What's the response been from it is viewers? Been, it's been, people are, there are a lot of like minds. I mean, people, uh, by the way, out here on, um, at, at the um, Lehman College, there were several people from Long Island here who were farmers mm -hmm. who were there, who are from Long Island. Uh, so you have a very active community out here. Um, it's quite, quite an issue that we face out here too, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. But there were discussion. a lot of people there that were very concerned, and they are active farmers. You have a lot of small farms out here, and mm. Mm, so congratulations on that, too. We just have to support them. Mm -hmm. But so he's become a star? <laughs> well, in his own mind, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so other response, though? You kind of re reacted like, is some of it been no, not no, no, all no, positive? No, no, no. The, no, the response has been really, really... 
very, very positive. And um, I think we're all interested in we are the sickest nation in the world and the most over-medicated nation in the world. And there's a reason for that. And, you know, that's when he says our stomach is our first line of defense, uh, there's a lot of truth to that. And I think that, you know, we, we all need to be really conscious of what we eat. I am so glad that um, you brought the film around to the point where he offered some, not necessarily solutions, but some positive reinforcement for the future in that small farming is the way to go. Um, and then him starting his own outpost, which I thought was great. But yeah. up until that point, it was like I felt a sense of helplessness, you know, mm -hmm. almost hopelessness. Yeah, that's, uh, if you aren't aware of these things and some of this uh, information you just find out maybe for the first time, some of it you know, you don't know the depth of it, but um, it's, a, it's very concerning and it's very, very scary. I've also been involved with, uh, do a lot of work with Autism Speaks and, you know, there's a lot of controversy about vaccines and all of that, but there's such stuff in our environment and in our food. I mean, we have to to put the cause of what's happening with obesity, with cancer, with asthma, with just go down the line here. There's there's, there's got to be a reason for this. How about all the allergies? The that allergies we're all suffering from, right? Like me right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if you look up in the sky and see what they're spraying. Um, <laughs> so is this we'll made, into that though. <laughs> has, what has this done for you in your life, making this film and meeting John? Well, I've always kind of took care of myself, but since both Nancy and I have, um, um, we have just learned so much from this and we become our own um, advocates and activists in our, in our way, certainly not as effective as John can be, but it's, it's certainly changed, it's changed, changed my life. And I know it's changed Nancy's life, and it's changed other people's lives, too. We've had, in addition to all the festivals, we've had like four local screenings, too. And um, You know, people respond really positively to this. And, you know, we've had a couple vegans who ask questions, but it wasn't antagonistic, you know. And it's mm. like, I always feel like in this film, and I can look around the audience when he starts that, um, putting that, uh, stare in the blue blue thing and you don't know where it's going <laughs> you know you don't know if you're going to see something or not but did I think, you did you not want to get into detail on all of that no definitely not that and we didn't uh, when we first started it definitely not that because I've seen some where they you know they bleed the bleed the animals and slice them and do all of this and I can't watch it personally I can't watch that I don't care about that but I think he probably explains that from his own philosophical and spiritual view about as well as anyone can explain it. But it is the reality. Oh, it is a reality. If you're going to eat yeah. meat, right? Yeah, absolutely, yep. absolutely. And, you know, he still cares, he still feels the same way about it. This is after all these these kind of years there. I mean, he has, he's a very loving, caring person with his animals. It's all true. Everything you saw in the film is... And, and you've screened this uh, out west, like in the middle of the bread basket, uh, those areas? Yet? Well, um, there's so much CAFO as the uh, confined animal feeding lots out there and with chickens and with beef, with um, pork. They just have, don't have a life. They, they, and there's some people who are kind of coming around. The bigger companies say they're coming around, but let's hope they do. But, you know, it's just what... It, You've seen pictures probably of the feeding lots in, in Iowa and outside of Chicago, and they're just like 5,000 cattle in a six or 10 acres, and they just... Um, but this has been written about, remember the book The Jungle? Wasn't that the name of it? Back in the 20s? It was, well, there was a... Was it Sinclair Lewis? Yes, or was it I called think it the, was, yeah. There was a, wasn't it a movie, too? I don't know, but was it yeah. Sinclair Lewis who wrote? And it was about exactly this. Oh. Upton Sinclair. Upton Sinclair. You know, there was a lady, I can't think of her name right now, but you would probably know it if I could think of it, but she had autism. And she watched how these cattle were being slaughtered. And what's her name? Temple, Temple yes, thank wow. you. She um, had such an impact on this industry because she designed a way where uh, the cattle, when they're she takes them through a maze. So by the time they get up to the point where they're going to be slaughtered, 
um, they relax instead of just shooting them down the line and people prodding them with the electric sticks right. and everything. Yeah, and, and Temple actually was on the uh, board of um, another organization that I'm involved with whereby they uh, videotape or they have videos. Um, they film the uh, Cargills and the slaughterhouses and things like that to make sure that they're doing it right. But it's more a, um, a cost thing because if someone misses a chicken, then it goes all the way down the line, you know, and what their duty is. But oh, Temple God. did devise this maze where the cattle, you know, they just go like this. So, you know, by the time they get up there, it's hmm. they're more relaxed, evidently. Any questions? We just have a few minutes left. You have to ask, why as a nation are we poisoning ourselves? Also, agribusiness every every day is being owned by you know outside countries. That what they're doing is that they're using our our land, our facilities, and the processing of chickens now is done in China. They have mm -hmm. uh, these tremendous factories that have mm -hmm. thousands of people that all they do all day long uh, is is execute chickens and, and prep them and they ship them back to us. That's right. And That's right. Uh, it's like a crazy thing. Like, well, why are we poisoning ourselves? I think, you know, that's a question that everyone asks. And I think you have, it's just so political and it's so, it's just a political, it's a political issue, you know, and they don't do it. We do get very little help. The farmers, as John says, he doesn't get one dime um, for subsidies and you know, we don't promote the small farmers. We promote, it's just money, 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 money. Um, but why, why we aren't smart enough, why we as a, as a nation, uh, as a people, are not uprising enough to have some effect on this. I mean, they keep appointing people who are ahead of Monsanto and charge of EPA and USDA. I mean, get, come on. Uh. <laughs> Better living through chemistry. Oh. Okay, one more, one more guy. Actually, while the phone was, uh, while the movie was paused, I, I looked online about John. That's his name, John, right? Yes, John Ubaldo. Yes, John. He's got a uh, fundraiser online for um, raising money for some equipment that was stolen off. That was quite a while ago. Was yeah, oh, okay. he wanted a security system. Yeah, that was a GoFundMe, th GoFundMe. Thing. So, but that was, yes, indeed. I beg yes. your pardon. Has the film been shown in We've been at around twenty festivals: the West Coast, the Midwest, um, um, yes, and the East Coast too. And the We've response been overall. We've by some of the best too. <laughs> and response overall has been. It's been the same. It's been the same. I mean, you know, we can we can have a conversation here like this, and it's meaningful and. You know, we just hope that it's, if you, we can change or affect two or three or four people or one person, it's, it's just worth it. We've had so many testimonials at uh, Q&As. Uh, one lady said that you saved my husband because he wouldn't listen to me. You know, and he had no <laughs> form of cancer. <laughs> well, bravo. bravo. Great job, Ken. <laughs> no, Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all for coming.